To figure out if there's anything camouflaged in that design, I'm gonna need some paper. Hello again. Do you by any chance have some plain paper that I could use? I most certainly do, but it's up in my room, and I'm afraid I cannot retrieve it for you until I'm finished here. You get the sudden urge to draw a picture? Something like that. I know, I'll help you. That way you'll get done faster. Gracious, you are the picture of impatience, aren't you? Well, I appreciate the offer, but here, why don't you just take this instead? It's an extra key to my room. The paper's in a drawer in my nightstand. Just go on up and help yourself. But make sure you lock the door when you leave, you hear? You I trust. But Henry, him I do not. I really appreciate this. And long as you're going up there, my appetite could use a little placating. So I would be much obliged if you would bring me a candy bar from my nightstand. And take one for yourself while you're at it. One for Renee, and one for me. Yum. Gosh, these things are good. Mm-mm-mm. You bring me that Coco Kringle bar like I asked? Right here. Bless you. I'm so hungry I could devour these plants I'm potting up, dirt and all. How else may I be of service to you? Those weird symbols on the wall in your room, do you know who painted them? I did. Fact of the matter is, 
There's a spirit living in that wall. A spirit? Got a voice that it sends shivers down the spine of Dracula himself. Used to hear it sometimes, in the dead of night, half talking, half whispering, saying this one word I never heard before, like it was from a language no one on earth spoke. And suddenly, I knew. The spirit was trying to cast a spell on me, so I got me a book and found out that by painting the word I heard on the wall, syllable by syllable, in hoodoo signs, I could counteract the word's power. And you know what? The spirit has not spoken that word or any other since. What was the word? Darling, a sack full of water moccasins couldn't get me to say that word out loud. Nor will I write it down, no sir. Not ever, ever, ever. I'll see you later. Take care, hon.
This must be the painting that goes in that empty frame. Due to current weather and road conditions, cab service to the greater New Orleans area has been temporarily suspended. We regret being unable to serve you at this time. Hello? Nancy? Hey, Ned. It's about time you called. Did you make it to New Orleans okay? Yep. Have you seen Henry? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure I like the way you said that. Is he okay? He's fine. Well, he's the executor of his great-uncle Bruno's estate, which he's not real happy about. But he and his great-uncle weren't that close, so he's not grief-stricken or anything. Well then, are you okay? Other than being attacked on my way into Henry's house by a skeleton wearing a red ascot and getting knocked out by the smoke bomb he threw at me, I'm fine too. What? Let's just say that I've stumbled onto a mystery, and I'm not leaving till I solve it. It's also raining cats and dogs, and there's no cab service, so I'm kind of stuck out here anyway. Is Bess with you? No, I told her I'd meet her back at the hotel. So tell me about this skeleton man. Well, it was someone in a costume, obviously. He or she was leaning over something in the great room when I walked in and surprised them. So they threw a smoke bomb at you and ran? Yeah, I must have interrupted whatever they were doing. What were they leaning over? A scale model of the cemetery next door. Henry says his great-uncle Bruno made it so he could keep track of who was buried there. Apparently, Bruno used to oversee the cemetery. And, right near the scale model, I found a tracing of some kind of symbol. I'm thinking maybe Skeleton Man dropped it. Why would Skeleton Man be interested in the scale model of a cemetery? Good question. Maybe I'll take a real good look around in there and see if I can find out. Good idea. I'm still trying to figure out how you got to be friends with Henry. Well, we're not best friends or anything. Heck, we're not really even friends. I just feel sorry for the guy. I mean, he never hangs out with anyone between classes, and when I'd heard there'd been a death in the family, I just wanted to make sure he was okay all by himself down there. Don't worry, he's fine. Although I think he misses his parents a lot. I saw him out in the cemetery by what I think is their crypt. He seemed pretty upset. I'm not surprised. I get the feeling that what Henry looks like on the outside is just the opposite of what he looks like on the inside. You know, you're a pretty nice guy. Yeah, I know. Bruno Bole's housekeeper, Renee, is still here, despite the fact that she and Henry don't really get along that well. Why do you think she's staying on? She says it's because Bruno paid her in advance. But you don't believe her. Ten percent of Bruno's estate is supposed to go to her. Only she thinks Henry's been selling off Bruno's assets on the sly. So it wouldn't surprise me if she's staying on so she can keep tabs on him. How much of Bruno's estate is Henry supposed to get? 30%. That's a pretty healthy chunk. He wouldn't be selling stuff on the sly. This Renee person sounds kind of paranoid. What this Renee person is, is freaky. In what way? She wanted me to drink some strange-looking concoction after I passed out from the smoke bomb, but she refused to tell me what was in it. And she wears this weird little pouch around her neck. Says what's inside it connects her to the energy that powers the universe. 
She's probably harmless, but stay on her good side, just in case. That's it for now. Keep me posted. You got that? Got it. Bye, Ned. Bye, Nance. Hello? Bess, hi, it's me. Hey, Nance. I just got back from shopping, which I am happy to report is fantastic here. So, what's going on with you? A lot. A lot is in a whole bunch of fun stuff? Let me start by telling you what happened when I arrived at Henry's house. I walked up to the front door and discovered it was open, so I walked in. You were knocked out by a skeleton wearing a red ascot? Someone dressed as a skeleton wearing a red ascot. Although the housekeeper here thinks it really was a skeleton, Mr. Death. But then, she's a little strange. You think it was a burglar? I'm not sure. I caught him or her sneaking around this scale model of a cemetery. And later, I found a tracing of something right by it. So if I could just figure out what it's a tracing of, and what, if anything, it has to do with that model cemetery, I might be able to figure out who Skeleton Man is. I know that tone of voice. You're not leaving there until you've done just that, are you? Actually, I'm not leaving because they've canceled cab service around here because of the rain. In fact, since I can't go anywhere, I'm hoping you can check something out for me. I found some kind of receipt in the fireplace that may or may not be a clue. What's it a receipt for? That's what I need to find out. See, it's half burned up. All I can read is the receipt number and the name of the place it's from. Zeke's. Zeke's? you got to be kidding me. Why? What do you mean? I mean, I'm sitting here on our balcony in the French Quarter looking down at a place across the street called Zeke's. That's great. So go over there and ask whoever's behind the counter what receipt number 21-3872 is for. You... you want me to snoop? I wouldn't call it snooping. Uh-uh, forget it. Not gonna do it. Beth... I'm not good at that sneaking around stuff, Nancy. I get nervous, my tongue gets all knotted up, my palms sweat to say nothing of my armpits. Beth, receipt number 21-3872. Just go in and ask what it's for. No big deal. Maybe not for you. Beth, you can do it. Mm, this is not gonna end well. I just know it. Okay. I'll call you as soon as it's over. I'll be waiting. 